Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next uh, conversation this morning is talking of uh, what that is going to Benue State, where the governor, Samuel Otom, uh, met with President Muhammadu Buhari uh, to place uh, certain demands and, of course, to share his views on the security situation in Benue State. There's also discussions on the 2023 pres uh, well, elections and whether they would be able to uh, be run with the state of security in Nigeria today. Uh, we've invited uh, this morning to join us, uh, Mr. Ladipo Johnson. Thank you so much for stepping in and for being Thank on the you. program this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you. All right. So let, let's get into it. Um, th the questions, you know, surrounding Governor Tom's uh, assassination attempt, um, uh, there's a lot of them. Um, so let's start with that. Uh, it's one of the things that I brought up earlier on the program this morning, how damaging it is that a governor um, of a state would have to run 1.5 kilometers, according to him, <laughs> to survive an assassination attempt. And, uh, um, and at, at, at the end of that, still needs to go to Abuja to meet the president to make certain security demands. What does this all say to you? Well, um, the first thing is that um, we thank God for his life and the lives of his um, security details. Um, uh, it is um, regrettable that we have reached this stage whereby um, even presumably the most protected man in Benue State is not safe. Um, the insecurity situation in the country has deteriorated over time, over the past few years. Everyone's been talking about it. Uh, Mr. President took such a long time before changing the service chiefs um, so, but in a way, it isn't good, but it is good that this happened to the number one citizen in Benway State. Because now they, they've always known, but now they will take it even, it will be even more serious. The fact that the people of Benway State have faced from village to village in um, security issues with um, rampaging herdsmen or bandits or whatever you call them. The fact that he had to go to the president speaks to our uh, federating relationship, uh, our system of government. It makes it clear that the chief security officer of the state really is not the chief security officer of the state. He cannot do anything with the police commissioner. The police commissioner has to confirm with the IG. So you, you see, it opens up certain things. And as 2023 approaches, we have to ensure that we put these things on the front burner. They must be the issues that will be addressed by we the people and by those who seek to represent us. Mm. This issue of farmers herders clashes, insecurity, yeah. is a lingering one in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Even way before the Boko Haram insurgency, you know, began in like 2009, we've had insecurity. But even though it's becoming worse as the day go by, we see newspaper headlines of people being killed, people abducted, just everyday people trying to get by. And what we're hearing now is that people are saying, Insecurity in Nigeria would only change when people in power begin to feel the heat. Like what happened, Otto? Yes. Well, the main problem, I think, apart from anything else, and I think that's what you're alluding to, is the fact that our people, ex especially the executive arm of government, haven't shown the political will to face this problem head on. I really, I really do not understand why, well, I understand why, but we shouldn't be where we are at now. We've had more than enough time. Our borders are porous. Um, intelligence is nonsense. The, all they do is, um, yes, he said something on TV, they invite you and what have you. The main thing you're not doing. Trust in government is at an all-time low. And when that happens, 
the intelligence you need from the villagers, from local citizens, you won't get. Because a lot of them are afraid of saying, oh, we suspect so, 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 going to the police or whatever. Because they don't know whether the police or the military they're going to yes. are the people informing the, um, the bandits or what have you. It is such a sad situation. And um, something drastic must be done to stem the tide and um, try to improve things. What kind of demands uh, do you expect that? Or, you know, what do you think their conversation would have been like from uh, Tom to President Mohamed Buhari? <laughs> and what kind of demands would he be making? Well, um, if, if I were in his shoes, I would be talking about um, intelligence, um, equipment, more men, things like that. The police, I don't know, uh, we probably have, uh, do we have up to half a million police in Nigeria? I doubt it. For a country of 200 million people. Things like that. We've been budgeting year in, year out on defense. Nothing. Nothing. You, you have, look, you see other countries. Let's take the borders. The borders, because we all know they've been sane, we are not sure, but we think, reasonably think that some of these herdsmen are from outside Nigeria. They live a nomadic life. They come in with the cattle, go around, go out again. They have the routes they've yes. passed over the years. Now, how do people who are not Nigerians come into the country without documents, without anything. They come in, do whatever they want to do, go back out. You will recall with Boko Haram that towards the end of Jonathan's um, tenure, it was when he entered into a partnership with the government of Niger that they were able to stem part of the problem. Because on the Nigerian side, they were there to stop yes. those, um, the insurgents, and on the Nigerian side as well. So there must be partnership with the countries around us. You must use technology, like drones and what have you. I'm not a security expert, but it just makes sense to me that if you cannot police, police the border or patrol the, ex, the border of Nigeria, you must use technology towards it. The problem is a drone that is $10,000 or $5,000 or let's say even military-grade drone, when it gets to Nigeria, it becomes a billion. That, 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 you understand? That is part of the problem we have. But if they were serious about it, if they had the political will, and they will develop the political will when those in government get affected directly, Talking about those in government being affected directly, it's happened before. We remember the case of Zulum. He was attacked, I think, twice. Yeah. What's happening with Autumn happened. You saw back and forth from the presidency and the state government. And a few months later, we're seeing what, happening, what, what happened with Autumn. But remember that in the case of Autumn, we're seeing a Fulani coalition, a Fulani group taking yeah. responsibility for this. The Fulani nationalist movement, thanks to our game. Would we, would we then say that this is a direct attack, like some are saying, an assassination attempt? Are we looking in that direction? Well, if you have a group that is not faceless, are they faceless? They're not. There's, there's, yeah. there's not been any you know, video confirmation. There's not been you know, yeah. names put out, just the name of the group that we've seen so far. Okay. If you have a group that says that um, they were responsible, um, then you have to begin to think of it in that way, that manner, that um, yes, it was an assassination attempt. They knew it was him and they went for him. And uh, the likelihood is that they'll do that again. Usually when these things happen, if they're trying to prove a point, they're trying to teach them a lesson, maybe they've had problems in Benue with the various communities, farming communities, and they've decided that, okay, we'll go for your number one man. Then it makes it even 
um, a more precarious position. And um, it just shows that government, now I'm talking about the federal government, over the years has lost control of the situation, of the narrative. They, um, they've been, we all know how it happened, they've been more protective towards the herdsmen than towards the farmers. It's always been, oh, you know, they're your brothers. Well, they're not my brothers. They don't, most of them probably don't come from Nigeria. They're not my brothers. And if my brother comes to my farm and tries to kill me, then I should have the right to kill him. Okay. I know it would be chaos in Nigeria, but I begin to have sympathy for those who call for us all to carry arms. It would lead to chaos. Right. But uh, it's better than being a sitting duck. Yeah. I have a statement here from FUNAM, the Fulani Nationalist Movement. Movement yes. It's signed by one Mr. Shehu. He says, yes, yes, we did. The Fulani Nationalist Movement, FUNAM, carried out the attack. We have genuine reasons. We acted on behalf of Fulani people in 15 countries. It went on to say, our courageous fighters carried out this historic attack to send a great message to Autumn and his collaborators. Wherever you are, once you are against Funadi long-term interest, we shall get you down. This is a clear warning. And it goes on and goes on with threats. Then reacting to this, we saw that the police state command in Bainry State, mm -hmm. according to them, said they went to the farm area because it was a river and area. They saw some Jukun fishermen. <laughs> they took them, arrested them, and are investigating oh them. It's just a joke. I tell you, Nigerians were jokers. The police are a joke. You go, anyone does attempts to um, assassinate the um, governor of the state will be there with his fishing, fishing boat or something some two, three days afterwards. It's crazy. And that is it. If they don't want to do anything, they should keep quiet instead of insulting the intelligence of Nigerians. Now tell me, after that statement, that statement was a few days ago, yeah. have we had anyone from the presidency, any leading Fulani figure in Nigeria come out to say, you're talking nonsense, you're not representing the Fulani people? Hmm. Not one of them. And when it begins, they start to say, oh, you have your bias towards the Fulani. You're biased towards this. You're biased towards that. Mono nobody has the monopoly of violence. I always say it. Nobody has the monopoly of violence. And that's why you see governor, the way Governor Wike reacted to the matter, saying that if it happens, then that's the end of Nigeria. Because this government has been, um, I'll go as far as saying it's been complicit in this matter by its inaction. Do you think things might change after 2023? Things have to change. If not, we're stupid, stupid fools. Things have to change. We cannot continue this way. A lot of people do not have an alternative. Even if you can go to Canada or anywhere else, you'll still be seen as a Nigerian first, even if you have their passport. So I wonder at Nigerians who just want to run away, run away, run away. Yeah. The fact remains that wherever you go to, after a while, they'll say, go back to your home and fix your home. And this thing is so simple. I believe that majority of Nigerians are right-thinking people. They are people who want this country to work. But they keep quiet every four years, the last elections, you had maybe just 25% turnout. No, 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 Ninkom Poop is going to fix your country. I'm not calling the president that. But no, 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 we'll not fix the country for you. We all have to participate. We all have to uh, be part of the decision making. Not everyone has the time to go and sit in government. But you have to participate one way or the other. Those who participate now, majority of them are people who are... Uh, at the level, forgive me, where they have to receive 1,000 naira, 4,000 naira, gari, rice, um, groundnut oil, to vote. They can't take decisions on behalf of people who, who are right-thinking people. So when we keep it going on and on and saying it's government, no, it's the people. It doesn't also seem like uh, we've learned 
you know, any lessons so far. You know, and I'm, I'm also saying this because of, so one of the, the things that I believe prompted the NSAS protest last year was, you know, because of uh, police brutality and at the same time was because of uh, the, the recklessness with which the Nigerian police force acts. I don't know what concerns a Jukun fisherman with the assassination of uh, Governor Tom, but um, it, it still just tells that the Nigerian police itself hasn't in any way changed its attitude or changed its, its, its way of working. Um, and they just need to find somebody to blame for you know, every other you know, incident that, that occurs. Um, I, I, I you know, will talk also about 2023 and the uh, statements made by Governor Samuel Otom now saying that the 2023 president um, or elections rather at risk if security situation continues like this. Uh, do you agree with him? Do you think that we should even be talking about 2023 in the first place uh, at this time? No, I mean, we, we have to keep talking about 2023 and elections that um, come after that, before and after, because that is the um, channel we have, the vehicle we have within our constitution to bring about um, change and positive change, we hope, um, in the country. Um, in the Nigerian context, <laughs> uh, insecurity would lead to elections being postponed. Any, 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 any um, excuse in the Nigerian context will be used, yes. yeah, because they don't see elections as being sacrosanct. Oh. Unlike in other countries. In the US, they had an election during the Civil War. They, they will. They don't joke with it. That, that change must occur, change of power must occur at the time it is scheduled to occur. But as I said, as we all know, in Nigeria, we don't appreciate our democracy. And most of us don't even believe in the Constitution. That's the sad thing. But yes, it's a conversation that must be had. I'm talking about 2023 now. Um, and it's good that Governor Autumn uh, mentioned it because we must always look forward. If you have a person who is commander in chief and for some three, four, three years, four years, refused to change the security infrastructure with what is being felt in the in north, north central, north, northeast, and maybe now it's part of the southwest, southeast as well. If you have that sort of person, then you have to decide when those places have to decide um, before the elections that they have to do, look for someone who will put their security as number one. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ladipo Johnson, for your thoughts on this very important issue of national security and the 2023 elections. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a break here to return with the story about the Obolas.